Good evening and welcome to the CUNE Academy for this installment of AP U.S. History, where we're not just learning history, we're making history. All right, this lesson today is going to be on the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. Hopefully in class today, we uh, got through the Civil Rights of the 50s and uh, <clears throat> things kind of carry over into the 1960s with the uh, presidency of John F. Kennedy. All right, so starting out, a group I want to make sure we know about is a group called SNCC. <clears throat> All right, this is the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I don't think they're a note card, but they're one of the more important civil rights groups. In fact, I hopefully we'll talk about this in class, um, but uh, Eric Foner, uh, and when I was learning about civil rights and things with him, talked about how um, Jimmy Carter, as president, was uh, meeting some historians down in Atlanta, which is kind of Martin Luther King country, um, and uh, said that Martin Luther King is not the reason uh, the South was integrated, but it was SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. So you can kind of see here that these were a group of college students from North Carolina that staged uh, sit-ins um, at uh, lunch counters throughout uh, North Carolina and Greensboro as a way to protest the um, segregation at the lunch counters. Because the lunch counter back then was kind of where you would sit to get your hot food, and it was kind of the primo place to sit. Um, and uh, they kind of got uh, a lot of publicity, and people were intrigued by their nonviolence uh, tactics, uh, kind of inspired by Martin Luther King. But they're also the ones that are going to be the ones that go down into the South to register the voters and get people um, to take political action to end some of the segregation and things. So important group I want to make sure you know. And uh, one of their leaders is this woman here. Her name is Fannie Lou Hamer. And uh, I just love uh, putting her picture up because she had just a famous quote. She was kind of a almost illiterate, uneducated, like grade school education woman who lived in the South and just got fed up with things and had a famous quote saying that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So Fannie Lou Hamer joined SNCC along with several other um, prominent leaders like uh, John Lewis, who's a congressman from Georgia today, was close with Martin Luther King and a few others. All right. So she said, we didn't come all the way up here to compromise for no more than we got in here. We didn't come all this way for no two seats because all of us is tired. That's in reference to Rosa Parks. And I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And this is what her epitaph is, which is on her headstone. And nobody's free until everybody's free. All right. So the 60s kind of begin with what are called the Freedom Riders. I know this is not the movie with Hillary Swank, uh, but these are people that are uh, protesting the segregation in bus terminals in the South. So um, this is actually the wrong kind of bus to show you. It should be like a Greyhound bus. Um, but the Supreme Court had said that that is unconstitutional to segregate the uh, bus terminals because it's interstate commerce and the Congress can regulate that. So uh, these Freedom Riders got on these buses in Virginia and we're going to ride all through the South and test the waiting rooms at these different facilities to see if they can um, have the Supreme Court uh, uphold their decision. And the uh, Kennedy administration decided to send marshals to protect the riders uh, to basically make sure that this was um, going to be protected and it was going to be no violence. All right. Uh, later that uh, decade in 1962, James Meredith integrates uh, Old Miss, which was uh, one of the last Southern universities that was all segregated. All right. Remember, Mississippi is the state with the Confederate flag and its flag and, and things like that and has uh, definitely a history of uh, racism and segregation. And Kennedy uh, sent... Uh, Marshals in to protect James Meredith, and a couple of them actually were killed during that one. But um, he was uh, the lone person to test that policy down in Mississippi. Now, 1963 is probably your most important year in the civil rights movement because the University of Alabama is going to be integrated by several st or two students that are challenging that school's admissions policy, and Governor George Wallace will actually stand in the doorway to block their admission uh, from happening. So he. Um, and eventually gets out of the way when Kennedy authorizes the National Guard to use force to bring these troops in. So in each of these cases, Kennedy is supporting um, these cases of integration throughout the South. And Kennedy sends a bill to Congress to uh, basically promote civil rights and end discrimination in public facilities. But Congress is very reluctant to pass that because the South has a lot of power in Congress. Okay, uh, Medgar Evers, a prominent civil rights leader, is murdered that year. There's actually a great movie called Ghosts of Mississippi about Medgar Evers. Um, no, you can't watch it for enrichment points, but uh, it's a really good movie about his retrial in 1993 of the guy who murdered him and who was actually put in jail. And then the March on Washington, which we celebrated the 50th anniversary of this year with Martin Luther King, takes place in August of that year. And Kennedy really was nervous about that happening because he thought it could lead to violence and that the African-Americans were actually protesting him and not, you know, the South's policies. 
And then after King's speech, there is a bombing in Birmingham where a church is firebombed and four girls were killed in Sunday school um, as kind of a reaction to Martin Luther King's speech and kind of the backlash of the whites down there. Uh, one of the kids that did not go to school that day was a woman named Condoleezza Rice, you might have heard of as our uh, former Secretary of State. All right? And then Kennedy's assassinated. Now we've talked obviously in great length about that, but what does that have to do with civil rights? Because President Johnson, who takes over, is going to make Kennedy a martyr for the civil rights movement and basically urge legislators to pass civil rights laws in President Kennedy's honor. All right, March on Washington. There's a picture of it there from the, from the sky, as you can see. The goal is to get Congress to pass a civil rights bill to show that <coughs> they had the numbers and they had the um, willingness to take action and prevent uh, this discrimination from occurring. There were 250,000 in attendance, including 75,000 whites. So this was not an exclusively black issue. A lot of these were white college kids, members of SNCC and other groups. And right there is the spot where Martin Luther King gave that I Have a Dream speech. That's on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. So one of the st stones is uh, carved there as a monument to his speech. I don't know who those kids are. All right. <clears throat> um, now here's a response to Martin Luther King's speech. Um, it was published in one of the papers. It says the Negroes spent a lot of money, had a good time, and enjoyed a real circus or carnival type atmosphere. Now that the show is over, the black masses are still without land, without jobs, and without homes. Their Christian churches are still being bombed, their innocent little girls murdered. So what did the march in Washington accomplish? Nothing. Who do you think said that? I'll give you a hint. His last name only has one letter in it, and it's not any of the ones at the beginning of the alphabet. Uh, five points for the first kid to tell me who said that in class um, tomorrow. All right? Um, it'll be on Friday. All right. Well, no, I can't tell you that because there's the author. Okay. Uh, no extra credit on that one. All right. So the goal here, um, 1964, is what is called the Freedom Summer. And this is uh, a movement by SNCC and other civil rights groups to get blacks registered to vote. All right, and um, and then elect pro-civil rights legislators that will then pass laws to protect African Americans in the South. Okay, uh, Robert Moses and John Lewis mentioned him earlier were the leaders of this. Um, got all kinds of college kids, recruit all kinds of people to go down there and register voters. Got about a thousand college kids to do that, uh, as well as other SNCC members. Uh, remember that student nonviolent coordinating committee. That summer, three civil rights workers are murdered, inspiring another movie called Mississippi Burning, um, and which is a really good one. It's actually won Academy Awards and things with Gene Hackman and William Defoe there. Um, these guys were eventually captured and uh, put in jail, but uh, not for murder, because murder is a state crime, but for violation of civil rights. All right, two biggest pieces of legislation you have to know. All right, first one is Civil Rights Act of 1964. This is what they've been searching for. All the civil rights we've talked about, Brown versus Board of Education, Rosa Parks, Little Rock, all of this was done to get Congress to pass this law, which banned discrimination on race or gender. All right. Gender was kind of put in there by accident. We'll talk more about that in government class next year. But uh, this includes discrimination on gender as well as race. You cannot discriminate in any public accommodations. Now, how is Congress able to do that? Because by definition, any public accommodation, drinking fountain, bathroom, waiting counter, restaurant, is involved in interstate commerce. So Congress is, again, using the interstate commerce clause to integrate uh, the South and protect the rights of African Americans. Businesses cannot discriminate if they have more than 25 people in it. Okay, so um, uh, bans any discrimination in the workplace and in public accommodations. All right, we still got one more thing we got to do. We have legal protections, but we don't have voting protections. So in 1965, they organized a march on Selma, and this is a very perfect picture of that march. You kind of see them coming out of the clouds and into the light, um, marching from. Um, Selma to Montgomery, the capital of Alabama, to try and pressure Congress to pass a voting rights bill. Okay, And as the TV starts covering this, things get really violent, really bloody. Um, there's people killed. It's actually called Bloody Sunday, where the police totally backlashed against the civil rights leaders. Okay, And we're trying to get President Johnson to get Congress to pass a voting rights bill so we can no longer have the literacy test, poll taxes, etc. So the Voting Rights Act bans literacy tests. All right, poll taxes were also outlawed, but that was in the 24th Amendment. But a literacy test is uh, outlawed through the Voting Rights Act, so we can no longer test your knowledge to be able to vote. It said the federal government could be in charge of voter registration in the South, so that way the whites cannot prevent blacks from registering. And the effect was that it tripled the number of black voters in the South. It got a lot more people to vote, a lot more people involved in politics, 
And by 1968, 60% of all eligible African Americans are registered to vote. All right. So that concludes our lesson here in the CUNE Academy, where we're not just learning history, we're making history. If you have any questions on this, please bring them to class tomorrow. And as always, thanks for listening.